we put the uh, crank in the motor, we'll put the timing gear on it. That way we don't have to beat on the crank on the bearings. Install the main main cap bearings. Put some assembly lube on, and we'll set the crank in. Okay, today we're going to uh, show you how to use some plastic gauge when you're building engines. Really, it depends on which engine you're working on. You can check with the uh, manufacturer or owner's manual or anything like that. It'll tell you bearing clearances. So check with that and then you'll find out which plastic gauge you need to start with. But I'm doing a Chevrolet and Chevrolet I usually want about two and a half to three thousandths clearance. Now, what plastic gauge is, it just shows you a clearance range of your bearing how much clearance you have between the crankshaft and the bearing so that's really all you're checking you don't want too much play in there so we just take a little piece and sit it over take the main cap I'm torquing the main cap to 65. And now that shows us our clearance that we have. which is right about three thousandths. Now what I'm doing is I'm using this clearance range gauge to show me how how much clearance I have between the crank and the bearing and I'm doing that by the thickness of the plastic gauge that's smashed on there and it's about three thousandths that's about what I want. Okay now if, th if this smashes way too much let's say it smashes right here then I would have to take the crank back out and either turn the crank or look for a little bit different bearing and if it's a little bit looser than what I like I could torque it a little more and see if I can smash it down a little bit better okay all you do after your plastic gauge is you wipe it off and you put some assembly lube on there and put your bearing back on and torque it to the same spec and you should be done with that one and you can move on to the next okay now you would do the same thing on the rods but you can't torque the rods tighter than the specification on the rods so you need to check with your owner's manual or a book for the car and find out what your rod bolt check or our torque is and then you can torque it to that and that's it so if you have a problem on your rods and you're pretty much either looking for bearings or turning the crank again put this in the lube on there put the main cap back on We're going to go to 65. Once you do that, you can do it to the rest of them. Okay, now that we have the crank installed and all torqued, we're going to go ahead and check the uh, end plate for the crank. 
Okay, now you just take a little mallet hammer or something like this and smack it like that. You can only check in play on the bearing with the in play built into it. And there's only one bearing on this motor. It's right here. And that's 7,000 speed of gauge and it goes in. So we have 7,000 clearance on this motor of in play. Now typically a small block Chevy is anywhere from six to ten thousandths clearance of in play. But again you'll have to check owner's manual or all that or something like that to find out your specifications. But that's how you check it. You just take the tailor gauge and slide it right between the crank and the bearing. Just like that. If you have too much in play, you're going to be looking for a different set of bearings. And if you don't have enough in play, you can take the main cap back off and take the bearings back out and sand the sides of the bearing where the thrust plate is for the in play. And you just sand that until you get the in play that you want. In play is very important in the engine because the crank has to move so much. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and install the timing chain. Time to get our dot up. I'm just trying to line my dot to dot. Just take a little screwdriver and Push it down a little bit. Let's take a ratchet and tighten it up. Okay, now we're dot to dot. So, this is something I want to tell you guys. This is not number one top dead center. This is number six top dead center compression stroke. So you'll be 180 out when you stab your distributor right here, top dead center. So don't never do that. If you want to do it without turning the motor over and checking for compression, put this dot right here right here and you'll be top dead center number one compression stroke okay so when you go to all data or on this manual stuff like that and they're telling you to go dot to dot a lot of people assume that that dot to dot is top dead center compression stroke which it's not this dot to dot is your valve timing it has nothing to do with your distributor and your ignition timing don't assume that that's top dead center number one because it's not it's on its companion cylinder which is number six that's the same cylinder that's up at the same time that's just the cylinder that's firing. Finish putting the motor all the way together and turn it over where you have compression on number one. That means air coming out of the piston hole. Then you can stab your distributor in and as soon as you turn the motor over it'll fire up. That's why so many shows or so many guys you see that build a motor or put a motor together. I've seen it a lot on Spike TV and Jesse James and a lot of those shows where they'll build a motor and put it all together and put it in the car and mess with it for an hour and it won't start because it's 180 out and they finally figure it out. So that's why. 